Hey everybody, Hitch here again, casting for the Game is Hard Dota League, and today we're going to have a game from Solo Q versus Land 9, local area network 9. So, we've got an interesting uh, lineups here for you. There's the Invoker, there's going to be a Pudge, Silencer, Techies, and Lifesteal are all on one team against a more classic Bristleback, Wyvern, Broodmother, Viper, Huskar. Of course, none of these are exactly classic as um, there's not a lot of support really being played that you know they have the hard support the silencer, to go. and all that other good stuff but like it's uh it's gonna Five be an interesting seconds. game and i'm kind of happy to be here to bring it to you so we got uh all right up oh, come on give me my free camera there it is all right so we got stormy wt picking up the pudge sane back Everybody on his invoker set. for uh solo queue no sorry this is land nine no no it is solo queue yeah and then Mew, Mew Inc. is to pick it up. Attack, he's got the Arcana. Didone picking up the Support Silencer and Rune on the Lifestealer. On the opposite side for Land 9, we got Herberson rocking his new Immortal. <laughs> and Red Pets on the Bristleback. Got the Viper being taken by Matchlock, headed mid. And Huskar from Aximness. And Narte Squared. Uh, picking up the Winter Wyvern. So Techie's already getting out, placing some wards, placing some mines, getting that whole Techie's mindset, so. <laughs> Somebody's asking everybody to commend all effigies. 30 so. seconds to go. Uh oh, mic chat is really bad for apparently the, uh, the dire side here, so. But, looks like this is gonna be an interesting game. We got Stormy WT. That apparently has an offer that still stands. So, so we got mostly naked heroes. Noah, except for the Evoker rocking his badass white hat. He picked up a theme here. He's got the, the hat, the shoulders, everything going. Really awesome. So, okay, Matt. And away Schlock. we go. He's going for the room, but he's just going to be chased off by three. He grabbed the battery room, but Huskar picks up the bottom battery room. But you kind of like to see your mid to have it more. So, hopes for interesting this one. that the Invoker being able to take that away. So we'll, we'll go to our mind vision, and uh, so we'll see who gets it. Winter Wyvern. Right, oh, that's the first blood. Almost a double kill right off the bat. Aximness getting taken out. That's less than 20 seconds for your first blood. Utterly amazing. Totally fun. Fantastic. Awesome time. <laughs> so we got uh, Techies and Pudge, the combination from hell. And uh, we'll get a pause coming out here by the Pudge. He's, he's having some chat problems, so... We'll see what happens. There's also a little bit of lag, so uh, the terrifying thing about this Techies Pudge combo is you put the mines where Pudge can just stand, get a hook, he pulls them into the mines, and it's a basically free kill. Also up top, this Bristleback, he needs to be careful not to get too much int stolen by uh, Didone, because that, uh, that, that cool spray spam is, is extra important to get him running. Meanwhile, mid, not a lot, you know, pretty standard builds from everybody. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at our last hits. So, so far, Invoker leading with one! Holy crap. D I'll be back. Fantastic. Okay, go and mute it. Again. Because apparently it only pays during everything that I don't want it to. Okay, so G called from both sides. We'll see if. Keeping an eye on this bottom lane, because. Got a super low Aximnist who brought, bought nothing. He's, he's just going to go ready to try to go straight for probably the <laughs> life gain and everything. But, oh no, Arctic Burn leveled up first. So there's no heal coming in, but brings his buddy a salve. That's an awesome Winter Wyvern for you. So Narte, getting ready to head back in the lane and try uh, to get something going here. Stormy w okay, so blows the uh, let's see, Arctic Burn, getting ready to throw some harass list at last hits out. Does some decent damage to the Pudge, who is not very tanky yet. Mid lane Invoker diving pretty deep, but getting nothing. Bristleback getting harassed as always, but he's he's got his cool spikes and his new Immortal keeping him safe, but he's, he's not got, able to go anywhere near this because of the this last word spam coming out. Zane rocking the uh, the Exhort Quas build. No say in here though, so he, he's less than, he's under 9,000, in case you're wondering. He's two mines, one more and they'll be ready for the kill. And it comes off a cooldown, let's see where he takes it. <laughs> I gotta admit, Techies, hate playing against him, love to watch him. As he brings in a soul ring already off of that first blood. Looks like, uh, yep, he's gonna go in and um, mine that rune, but he's scouted out in ping so they know they just give up on this bottom room. Techies has already got it. But there's a deep observer ward for the Radiant that's been preventing some 
stacking from going on uh, on the dire side, which will cause some problems as it goes for the stack. But, Double damage! As you see. Oh. <laughs> Apparently it's stacked. I thought that would have prevented Coin it, but free. double damage picked up by Teggies as he drops a entrance mine rather than the mine they think he was going for. So he comes back up, probably going to look for some harass with his double damage onto Aximus, but uh, he needs to be careful. Narte's Arctic Burn, and now the Splinter Blast. It's interesting, he's, he's saving the Cold Embrace because he knows it's going to be burst damage that kills them, not constant damage, because they have the constant damage on the, their side. But that burst coming out from Techies, he won't be able to save anybody with the Cold Embrace, so he's skipping it for this laning phase. Pretty decent idea, actually. Invoker going to uh, stack up. No, he's just going to take some stacks. Probably going to be rushing that hand to Midas like he did last time. He uses one of his shared tangos and just starts right-clicking people down. Uh, Forge Spirit's up in six seconds. He can use them to farm. Not a, not Nothing unusual coming out from there. Okay, so, one well, picked up a level in Bristleback to keep himself safe so he can just turn around. Meanwhile, he uh, got Open Wounds and Rage. So, 1-1-1 one, one, one build. For rune on this life stealer doesn't have the comparendium no glowing eyes sorry folks <laughs> all right moving back to bottom pudge he's got his three mines up now so let's he'll probably be looking for the hook on this wyvern if she stays Dyer's here mid tower can use a little a he goes near that <laughs> not saying not playing too safe but trying to get kind of harassy uh they want <laughs> maybe a little overconfident no hitting towers please. that's funny with Invoker missing, the Viper's having free farm in that mid lane, and that's kind of a dangerous thing. You don't want a uh, Viper to go uncontested. So Pudge trying to make it not obvious by, you know, just sitting on those Deny. mines. So he's kind of wandering around. Let's see if he goes over there now. He's got full mana, so okay, here comes the Arctic Burn. But just get two harass clicks, but uh, it's, I don't think it's worth the mana just for that little bit of harass. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not bad or anything, <laughs> but that's uh, a little dangerous. Our jungling Invoker. He's up to 1,300 to gold with 24 last hits. He's doing very well for himself. So that's going to be hard to deal with if we're not, uh, no. maybe later. Some denies coming out. The most denies are actually on a lifestealer. Really, really getting this poor bristle back even poorer. He's a full level behind without even dying or anything. Techies headed and grabbing that, uh, oh, bottle coming out for bristle back. Headed and grabbing the, uh, mine. <laughs> the bounty rune. Probably drop another mine here. Blows the uh, soul ring for a free mine. Because he knows he's got his, his suicide squad attack. So he's gonna... No. Decides against doing the wraparound. Because with the wraparound you get the hook. And Invisibility. Go. I'm surprised that uh, Pudge hasn't tried to hook anybody yet. with his, The mines are all set up. But I guess they're just not feeling confident with this, uh, this Huskar being full health and everything. He maybe he's just here. Okay, so it looks like he's just trying to bait them into walking towards him, but it's not gonna happen. You know, Tech, he's wandering around looking for. Uh, okay, he's just setting a bunch of mines, <laughs> as he does. So, Bristleback, he's got the bottle. It's not coming out to him yet. Looks like uh, the courier will instead be going to the bottom lane. Just some uh, nice sentry wards. Try to keep themselves safe from the mines. But there are a ton now going up in their jungle, and they they know that Techies is missing now because he hasn't been shown himself in a while. But there's these two nice hook spots that he set up for Pudge before he left the lane to try to get him some free kills and get him rolling. He's got three levels in hook, hasn't thrown one yet though. I'm curious to see uh, when he's going to decide to do that. Uh, interestingly enough, Narte and Aximness haven't pulled their lane back. They kind of want to keep the Creeper Equilibrium here so that way they can have more vision and control of this side shop here because they. Last thing they want is techies to get in there, mine it, and craziness. Fifth, just question, message to question mark. <laughs> Apparently we have a, a... They're playing one short, as you see, and on land nine, so we might have a remake here. <laughs> and they're going to go report him, of course, because you never come late to a game. That's... So, solo queue, they're... One player and one kill up at this point. Uh, we'll see how this well this works. But the excess gold can actually turn out to be a benefit if you if you can play it just right. The only problem they're having is this invoker has already has ten more last hits. He's, he's up to two thousand gold. He's moving right into that hand of Midas because you know he's that's exactly where he's going. They're picking out the camps. They're like, hey, jungle time. From that's the you know they don't have any stacks going on, so no recovery for anybody there. Uh, no, let's see, let's see anybody stacking anything over here. Okay, so we got a, a single stack. <laughs> Mind games coming out from the invoker, letting him know where these stacks are and exactly where not to go and where to go at the same time. So yeah, we got a, a few stacks on the side of the die that, that are going to be either some recovery farm if the uh, life stealer goes down, or just to keep the invoker from rolling even farther ahead. Hell, even Pudge if he goes down can 
plunder it and just rot them down a little bit. They're pinging techies. <laughs> Playing the mind games. You let them know where they are, and then uh, they, uh, <laughs> they're like, nah, no way. So they're... <laughs> So they got a, their fifth just message. then we'll see. Maybe we'll get a lobby remade or, or what's going to happen there. I'm pretty sure that at this point they're going to have to play without him. So really what's they're... What's uh, scribbling? <laughs> a troll coming out from pink techies. That seems appropriate. I mean, they're not goblins. They're little, they're little short trolls, let's face it. Uh, let's see, Huskar has already picked up his mask, his Morbid Mask, which he, he went straight for, as we saw in the beginning, but Narte, pretty damn right, poor, carry but on. getting the denies out, four at least, coming out. But, this Pudge is not having a great time, like, compared to this Huskar, Huskar is just wailing, totally winning this lane, really hard, 22 list, last hits ahead, and uh, they just placed on a Sentry Orb, but don't see any, <laughs> any landmines. So they're just gonna pull the creep wave towards them now, where they know it's safe. They don't have to worry about any any of these. Is that for me? Type it's of for mines all here. of us. <laughs> Techies getting all the mines. More bounty runes for him. He's actually doing a little bit better than the Pudge at this point. All right, need rune moving out to stack the camp. Uh, or no, he was just trying to farm it, but it's gonna be a little much for him right now. So he moves down. Gonna get the free regen. That's gonna be very. Generation. He might even rotate mid to go for gank. Decides against it and heads back. Looks like he's already got his phase boots as well, so that's going to be very well for him. They rotate the de de Don in, so that way he can get some levels on this. Temporarily support Silencer, because Silencer's that kind of character. Doesn't need a whole ton of anything. He just needs to be near kills. And he picked up his glaives finally when he comps level 4. Mew Ink deciding to mine up everything, and it's just... Oh, this is going to be bad for this poor Radiant side. They've decided not to go in. Okay, there's circles around the mines coming out from yellow, but it seems like it's Pudge. I'm not sure if it's Pudge or the Winter Wyvern. So, picks up a Smoke of Deceit. He's, he's got his boots pretty much done. His only problem is he, he needs them delivered because he didn't buy them from the side shop because of that control that the Huskar and Winter Wyvern put out. Maximus really doing very well for himself in this bottom lane. He's gotten pretty much free farm, not being harassed at all, because Techies is just taking the time to set up the future kills. So now Techies gonna move back in. Let's see if he uh, feeds away any mines. This mine is awfully close. Oh, it's right outside. But Narte sees him moving in and drops it. It's gonna be completely safe for them. Well played by Narte squared. Narte squared. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce squared. All right, so Hannah Mine is finished up for the Invoker as he heads back to his mid lane. Got this awesome Forge Spirit. This looks so, so freaking cool. You can tell this man loves his Invoker. In fact, his name's Sane. Uh, if he gets the hair, he'll be a Super Sane. <laughs> I'm horribly sorry for that. All right, Rune. <laughs> He's up to 33 last hits, keeping this Bristleback down to 14, less than half of his. And it's really important for him to, to keep ahead like this because uh, Lifesteal is not a hero you want to play from behind that. Bottom lane, they no, no just, just hanging out, trading hits since Farm Fest 2015. So, net worth, let's take a look. Coin for me. Net worth, no surprises. We got uh, the Invoker at the top, followed by the Huskar and Viper. Radiant's and top then, towers taking hits. The only thing I would say is pretty surprising is the uh, the Bristlebacks' lack of farm. He can use, you know, being a tankier hero with the, the bristleback passive and everything, he can get in there and use his cool spray to get some, some decent last hits. Oh, Rune popping out of that poor Wild Ring Ripper. And really, Her Hoverson not taking any chances. He's playing it nice and safe because he knows once if he feeds even one or two kills these guys away, they start the snowball. So he's doing a really job, for, good job preventing that from happening. Stormy WT getting ready to hook some people into mines. I'd say kind of close there. He's got level three. There goes the hook. Yeah. Totally whips it though. Narte moves backwards at the last second. Narte has picked up the cold embrace now, ready for the save if it ha if he needs to. Salve being popped or clarity, my bad, being popped by the the pudge as he heads back and goes for his second hook try. So he's got it ready. He's got level three. Throws it. Ah. Oh, just misses. Ah, is right. That's so frustrating when you see it. In the meantime, Winter Wyvern's <laughs> ultra poor, but 
getting all of the essential wards, getting everything up, the triple digit ping is here. So he's kind of explaining his, his, his hooks. Whoop. <laughs> you wink. Picking up an energy booster. He's got his boots ready to go, too. He's got his... Oh, God. Mana boots. Mana boots at 10 minutes on a techies is a very bad thing to fight against. The Don going, grabbing... No, he's just checking out this uh, Runus. He's going to take over the mid farm so they can get him quickly to level 6 and really get that last word online while Invoker... No, Invoker's coming out of the jungle, so they might go for for this gank, actually, on the Viper. Nine. Yeah, that's on Techies to kind of move mid lane. Okay, so he's just going to be harassing this uh, Viper, but because of the slow... Okay, he's got the 6 now. Because of the, the corrosive skin, he's actually hurting himself almost as much as he hurts the Viper. Port coming in from... Oh, it's Hush! There's the Silence Ghost. Bristleback going to be getting out of here if they're not careful. He pops the self. He's got... Oh, Sunstrike going to be just a little bit off the mark. Here comes the last word. And... Pow! Not enough. Cancels it, but he still has his bottle, and he's just going to walk out of here. Going to be walking out. <laughs> Techies, meanwhile, is like, who cares about ping? I've got mines. He's sitting just outside of the <laughs> the woods, but they see him planting him with this, this observer, so they know not to go there. Hopefully they remember, because it's really hard to remember where the hell all those little mines are. Narte, chilling like a villain. Axumness, he's picked up his Helm of the Dominator and he's picked up the Helm of the Iron Will as well. Doing very well for himself. Zane picked up his Power Treads. He's getting ready to uh, start being that terrifying Invoker who just has all the spells in the world. Probably going for a, a uh, an Aghanim Scepter next if he does what he did last game. He went Ags or Blink, depending. Or, or, or what I think I remember him doing. Turn WT, he's getting... Just waiting for that room time. See if anybody comes down to grab this 12-minute room. Nobody has so far, but let's see what he decides. New Ink getting some last hits, hanging out. Trying to get Peace his level here, uh, six so he can get the remote got mines going. Oh, so many mines. They're freaking everywhere. Invis rune for Pudge. You hate to see that. If you're going against this poor forty stack. But the excess gold is really doing them very well. They're, they're extremely far ahead right now. Even this Bristle, who hasn't had a lot of fun times in his lane, is, is doing he's got all the money in the world. I think this, this might actually make the difference if they can keep their items in progression ahead. They need to be very careful in choosing their fights. So, And they have been so far, which, you know, they lost two to Mines, but that's Mines, and that's just part of playing against Techies. I gotta say, I really love this Techies Mine placement. It's, it's no matter where you go, there he is. Uh, Invoker using some illusions. He might try to stack this, but they might die before that he has the chance. He's just going to walk him in and see that nobody's there. He might even... Uh, he's just... Okay. <laughs> just using him to scout out what's going on, see if it's something he can hand to Midas for a ton of mo ton of gold. As he heads back into the jungle. He's been very efficient, moving back and forth between the jungle and his mid lane. He's made so much money doing it, too. Really, really fantastic farming... Uh, Efficiency coming up from him. Armload of Morgan picked up the recipe by Rune. <laughs> oh, okay, that's just the, the cold embrace. Alright, or cold snap. Hoberson wandering around with his, his little pet and everything. And his Stormy WT is just kind of hanging out. He wants somebody to get close enough to freaking hook, and he's just getting impatient. He's picked up level 7. He's got the full combo. Looks like they lost some mines. <laughs> Uh, some mines hanging out there, so they, they lost some. Probably, let's see if there's any vision of it. Ooh, just on the edge, so maybe they caught the ones that were close enough. Stormy WT being pinged out, and I can barely see him. Axum missed. Nope, maybe they're pinging him to try to get him to hook, but not feeling too confident in his hooks with his current ping. So let's we'll see if he turns this into anything soon. The uh, Zane head back into the jungle. <laughs> It's up to 2,500 gold. I, I'm kind of curious what he's saving up here for. Coin for me. Silencer grabbing the bounty room, decides to head in and get some harassment on Matchlock on this Viper, who's already level 11 compared to the 8 on the Silencer. But the Invoker, who's the mid, is, is 11 matching him. And just two grand, almost two grand ahead. He's, he's 200 gold and he'll be 
two grand ahead of this Viper. But the Viper didn't go for a hand of Midas, so he's kept he's staying fairly decently uh, equipped with them, or even with them. He's gonna get some harassment onto the dome. He's not going for he's going Ags first. An interesting build. I like to see the um, mechanism first, but with with the way they're wanting to play this game, take it late and just build everybody up and build them up and build them up and then use the Winter Wyvern to continue the push. They don't want to fight early, so he's going for the, the late game Ags here. His Invoker's up to three grand and still hasn't bought anything. An interesting uh, plan he's got here. He knows he's, he's bullying the Viper because... And he's just going to keep doing it. He just walks in and he's good to go. He's out. Okay, some... Explosions happening mid, but it's just for free. New Ink just kind of chilling like a villain. WWT grabs the illusion room. Illusion. Heads to look near the Roche pit as he sends his illusions into the, the, the jungle to try to scope out. See if anybody's there, if there's anything he can do, because they're seeing only this, uh, this Huskar in lane as the Winter Wyvern is rotated top to try to help Hoberson out here. That's such a crazy looking immortal on him. Although this free farm viper is getting, he's already three quarters of the way to his Aghanim scepter, which could become a real problem for them if they're not careful. Thirty-seven hundred gold, just chilling on the invoker as he's twenty-two hundred gold ahead of the, his closest competitor, the Huskar. That's a third again as much. It's insane to me. Although Huskar, he's picked up, he's, he's got the Helm of the Dominator, he's got his arm a little more gotten. He can use the Helm of the Dominator to actually dominate creeps and send them into where he thinks mines are and get some free, uh, you know, not death. For his team. Natsalak picks up the uh, Staff of Wizardry for his lovely Aghanims. Almost 4,000 gold. That's like half of his net worth just sitting on this Invoker. What's he going to do with it? Why is he waiting so long? You know what? It's, he's going Insta Rapier. I'm calling it now. No. <laughs> That'd be insane. Dodone wandering around with some wards. Too exciting happening. It's Farm Fest 2015, but Hoverson actually getting some decent recovery farm. He's up to level 10, even with the Life Stealer. And he's closing in on him. Only 1600 behind him right now. <laughs> the Bristle has as much as the Invoker is carrying around with him. I just. It's crazy to me. What is he carrying around so much money for? He's got his hand of minus up in five, and so he's just going to increase that. Hoskar also playing super safe now that he knows he doesn't have a lane partner to help him out. So he'll just be kind of hanging out here waiting for the, uh, oh, here comes the port in from the Winter Wyvern. So, very interesting so far. I'm going to go and turn up my mic just a little bit so you guys can <laughs> hear me a little bit better. Sorry about that. He's Come on. Me. There we go. It's for <laughs> all of us. All right, that's for all of us. Apparently, it's the bounty room for techies. So I'm going to turn, yep, just <laughs> messing with my volume. Sorry about that, guys. All right, Axe of Miss, burning down some poor little creeps. He's got 900 gold in the bank. Let's see if Invoker's bought anything yet. Still nothing. He's almost, he's at 4,800. Stecky's take some serious damage from this mid laner. He's got his remote mines up, though, and so those are ready to go. But at the same time, there's only 100 more for Matchlock to get his Aghanim Scepter. He could be there very soon. He's only got 20 more. Can you make it in time? Yep. More mines, though, set up by Techies. Techies wants this kill on the Viper. He knows the Viper is their biggest farmer right now because he's just been kind of left alone as the Invoker's gone in and out of the jungle to collect up his 5,000 gold. What is he doing? I don't I don't understand. Maybe he's like, okay, they, they're down one. He's, he's trying to take it easy. He's like, okay, if they kill me, they deserve all of this unreliable gold I'm carrying around with me. Please. He's, <laughs> he's carrying around four grand in unreliable gold that will just... Go away if he dies. All right. Port top is the Evoker and the Life Stealer dive in on Hoberson. Oh, the cold from Grace. Going out, the ultimate, the silence coming out. Oh, what the heck? Oh, okay, it looked like Life Stealer was invisible for a second. The Don going to be able to just walk away from this one. Wow, he's full of those pincushiony thorns, but Matchlock coming in for him. He's, the Don sees him coming with the, the ward. He's pinged out and just, just get out as... Matchlock just kind of hangs Radiant's there for a second. He might have DC. Oh. I guess he didn't DC. He was just playing it safe. All right, he's picked up the Aghanim Scepter. He's got his treads. He is completely online. He's com totally ready to go. So let's see how he uh, he takes advantage of the situation. Of course, we got this ever increasing mind trap here, ready to kill him. But hey, we got the Huskar moving in. Let's see if he gets near any of these mines. 
Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower? All right, he's gonna go and start pinging. <laughs> start cleaning the tower. Uh, they're right there. They're so close. But now he's just gonna walk away. Getting some free damage as Life Stealer was rotated in from his his unsuccessful top gank. And you ain't coming grabbing this bounty rune. Mine. So many runes. He's halfway to his axe too, which gives him the the minefield sign, which will make <laughs> make it so invisibility lasts through true sight. Just one of the most annoying upgrades <laughs> ever. <laughs> All right, maybe they're gonna go in on this Huskar. He goes for the life break, but they both have armlets, so it's the other talk about it. But then there's the, the exploding techies securing the kill on Huskar. He gets 300 gold out of it, and uh, just poor Huskar never stood a chance. Even as buyback, Huskar. Losing a decent amount of change in that. Yeah, 329 gold lost on the Huskar. Luckily, he's been buying. He's not the invoker who's sitting on... Please tell me he bought something. He bought a butterfly! All right. You don't see a invoker butterfly too often, but Radiant's it's actually a pretty decent pickup for him. It's unexpected, and um, the evasion, they won't have a Monkey King bar to uh, to counter it. They don't have any monkey good Monkey King carriers, so... The evasion tactic's not terrible when you have that much gold. You, you know, he's four grand ahead, his nearest competitor, so I guess he's just thinking, evasion tank, you know? Well, they ping out the landmines to just say this triple stack gonna be going away here soon, probably. Went to Wyvern, Narte, he's still rocking less than a grand as he's put out so many wards. All of this True Vision trying to prevent any techies' deaths. Drops some vision, sees that there's nothing here. He's slowly trying to get rid of all of the techie mines. Throws out another one. Not gonna see anything though. So luckily the, the minefield that was techies existing. He's going, oh that was the explosion! It looked like it did it kill his pet? Where's his pet? Almond! He's dead! No, seriously, he'll probably come back. He just they, he hides when you're in combat, so he'll come back here in a second. But that looked like he straight up blew up his pet, and now it's gone. Everybody running in, trying to get this Huskar again. They know if they can keep him down there, they're in for a pretty good time. Degun, he throws the, all the curses, last word, and curse the silent. Tossing, tossing, but there's no mines here anymore, so he'll be able to juke around this, and here comes the Winter Wyvern, but the hook! Winter Wyvern blowing everything and going really hard on top of this denied Pudge at the last second. Narte being blown up by the last world from the Silencer, and they're going to right-click over some, over some down as well. So it's a three-for-one trade, but it was a deny. So both these two kills are come from suiciding characters. That's the joy of playing against Pudge and Techies. They can just deny you by killing themselves. Vanguard completed for the Bristleback and other news. <laughs> Looks like a bash are going to be coming out for the Life Stealer here in a second. Techies? Kind of just hanging out. Same stuff he's had. Meanwhile, Invoker's back up to 2,300 gold. As the bottom tower is starting to get pushed by Rune, he might be able to take this if... Yeah? He's just gonna hang out? He's... No, decides it's not worth it. Backs off. So he's not tanking the tower anymore, and uh, these remote lines are just gonna wait there for the Viper. Port in coming in, but cancelled, so Rune can just take this tower freely. Radiant's bottom Pop the uh, armlet, rage. And, last minute for radiant structure. Just like second, even. He drops the armlet and just decides to punch it to death the regular way. Radiant Brings him back up to 1500 gold. Towers. He's finished up his basher after those, the three kills bottom. But, you know, meanwhile, this matchlock invo uh, yeah, well, mouse. <laughs> Viper mid. He's just kind of hanging out. Let's see if he, he's, he's got 1600 gold, so he's probably not going to be building a mech here, apparently. Um, maybe this side the mech is better on, on the character. There's all the curses coming out from this invoker. As he gets ulted by the uh, Viper, he might be... He's dead. But here comes Stormy on the opposite. Doing a ton of damage to himself. He's under the tower as well. That's like just going to turn around. Here comes the mech coming out from the silencer. Last minute save on both him and the <laughs> Pudge. You ain't just Radiance setting all mid the mines in a flipping world. Narte, he's being pinged out by Pink, which is Techies. So let's see if he gets... <laughs> some stacks Coin right here they can uh, lure anybody into there the radiant deciding now is the time to stack up a team fight because they're well they're down a person oh, explosions happening but it's just mine's timing out viper headed top they can see him perfectly with this ward Did he pick up okay he kept his talisman of evasion okay we got two evasion-y uh, 
scores here, apparently. 3,700 gold back up on the Invoker. I have no idea what he's going to build, because he built a flippin' butterfly before an Aghanim separate or anything, so... His unique playstyle seems to be working out well for him, though, so far. He hasn't died. He's got the alacrity going. Wolf, but there's a whole team merging in on him. I see Hus Huskar goes for the dunk. Radiant's bottom tower ain't a pretty sight right he's now. He's building his probably assault cures, but uh, decides to back off. Radiant's bottom Ooh. tower seen better days. Uh -huh. Okay, the techies mines. Okay, everybody's just gonna go hang out near the mines and decide if they try to get somebody. Yash Assange picked up probably be a uh, uh, Yasha and Assange for the. Uh, the life stealer. It's it's great to get things rolling. It's oh, as Techies moves into the bottom lane as he decides he's Radiant's gonna blow up this tower. tower. Pretty Wouldn't be surprised right to now. see like remote mines and stuff just chip it to death. There's, there's no one who wants to come and deal with him. This poor Radiant side, they all have to be exactly right next to each other. Rune pops the uh, -tower won't last much longer. The armlet and starts going to town on the creeps and the tower. He doesn't even care. Think he's just sitting tanking this tower. Radiant bottom tower in 25 pretty sight minutes. right now. Him and Mewink, there's the explosion techies. There goes Radiant's too. bottom tower. As that will also net him his Aghanim Scepter. So, Rune headed out and, you know what, I don't know if so nobody's tried the Ag's Scepter. <laughs> Techies with, oh, hook going out and grabs a creep instantly. Kill. Them dire buildings are tough as nails. And invis heroes like Ricky are. How about that? Oh, sunstrike kill. Radiant top Winter tower is in bad shape. Dead. And top being pushed by the silencer. This is a really hard camp. Game is hardly no joke in here. Axing this. They're moving in on him. There's a DD rune on his life stealer, but he turns around. And the zombie brothers will be walking away from this. Oberson picked up his <laughs> He's got his Vanguard, but he hasn't made a lot of progress with anything since, but he's got Radiant's that bottle to keep him safe. Getting banged uh, up. To, so he can get away usually on this tankiness and bristleback. Mid tower also going down. This is just a systematic desolation. Radiant's mid tower is coming apart. Punch. Oh, misses the last Radiant's hit, though. mid tower is the Agnum Scepter for Techies. Rune? Life Stealer going for Blade of Lacket. I wonder where he's building up next. Let's check this invoker. It's a crazy thing he's built this time. Okay, it's a radiance. That makes no sense, but it's awesome. <laughs> See the, yep, picked up the sacred relic. Got has the recipe, and it's gonna be a radiant butterfly invoker, who's just. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's awesome. I, I you love seeing unique things like this, because with. You can't hit him. He's burning you down while he casts all of his spells, and he might even go in Viz next. The, he grabs, like, a Shadow Blade or a Silver Edge or something. You place down the sign. You can't see him. He burns you to death. He casts all his spells. And even if you do see him, you can't hit him. Stormy going for the hook on this Axe and Miss. But he decides... Nah. Dyer's Luckily with this, Dyer's hook's down. leveled up enough. It should kill a creep before it pulls it across the landmine, but he still wants to be extra careful. Some landmines just chill in his room. He's going for, uh, might be defusing. We'll see what he, he goes with this amazingly awesome team of solo queue. Yeah, this Radiance, uh, so he's just going to be pushing out the lane. Maybe he'll go Boots of Travel and just decide to escape any fights and become a, a pusher. Like I said, that's the beauty of an Invoker. He's so flippin' versatile. Radiant kind of stuck it together here in this mid lane as they're all together. They're letting him push it out as... Oh, Ping's out. Okay, Ping from Pink. He sees the... Oh, no. Lost the landmine. Radiant's okay, this has got to be a dominated creep. Yeah, like I said, that dominated creep to get some free kills on some landmines. They they ping out near this landmine. They'll probably send the creep there next. Radiant's top tower is taking hits. And top tower. Damn, everything's getting blown up. Mines expire in the mid lane as they've been scouted out by a sentry ward. Another ward set out by the dire. Radiant all sticking together, but because they have that man down, it's not as, as dire as it could be. <laughs> Blown the Arctic Burn just to run and set. Uh, oh no. Okay, <laughs> it looked like it wasn't going to be long enough that he was going to get stuck there. Luckily, it doesn't happen. Aximus moves into. Uh, okay, there it is. Sanj and Yasha picked up by the Life Stealer. They're just gonna right click this stuff down. So, the. F 
I don't know what's happening. I love this invoker player. Regeneration. That's all I gotta say about that. Dodone, he's picked up the mech. He's got a null tally and he's just kind of decided to go in farm mode himself. He's only gotten two stolen intelligence. Which, oh, yep, yeah, they're sending out that dominated creep. They really clearing out this mid lane so they can feel safe. The only problem is these remote mines are waiting for them. Techies pop up. <laughs> I'm guessing he's talking about the uh, the minefield sign. So they decide that they're gonna play it safe and just kind of push around their towers and everything. Quarter staff picked up from Matchlock as he's he's trying to build his own butterfly and we'll see how fast they can get it. Let's see what's yep Radiant there it is. That's an infusion blade. He'll probably level it up to two and just just I don't know. Like I said, he can do pretty much whatever he wants at this point. He's gonna kill the dominated creep, get get 44 gold from it, and save some of Techie's precious mines. But he's got the remote mines, which uh, really help. Let's see if he throws down the sign to keep them extra safe. The only good thing is, once you see that he has the Aghanim Scepter, then... Oh, he's building a Force Staff as well, so he can force people into his mines. That's fun on a mother flipping bun. Rune just standing and fighting. There's, they don't really have a lot to fear from this Radiant side, as Boots finally picked up by Winter Wyvern. Alright, even... Uh, let's check our net worths. So, as you can see, it's brown pretty solidly for solo queue since, well, their 22nd first blood kill. So, Starry being scouted out by this beautifully gorgeous ward. There's a reason it's constantly put there. But it's not going to be enough to save their, their the radiant tier 2 lost tower the top, top tower. And they're just going to keep moving and keep pushing. They're blowing the mines and blowing everything. As Invoker pushes mid to meet them and take down the tower there, he's got building up. It's like the level two of the, uh, excuse me, the diffusal blade. And here it goes. This is full life. There's Radiant goes the alacrity. There goes everything. It's just so much right click damage. They're not even. And then the explosions. And there it is. Techie is taking another tower. Link so dagger completed for punch. Explosions, death, destruction. Techies. That has been the. Uh, <laughs> It's been the theme here. Yes, I'll be back. casting in the next game as well. Um, but so far, okay, we kind of... You get hooked, then... Uh, <laughs> then the life stealer explodes out, and it's... It's just ugly. The mine being pinged out by the radiant side, but there's nothing they can really do about it. They're like, Pudge, come on, just hook anybody. Just blow all the hooks. He's just toggling on and off his, uh, his rot as he's got crazy regen. Because he's Pudge. See if he goes for the hook, blinks over, goes for the hook, grabs it, the explosion out, and that is a dead Viper. Sunstrike ready to go, even clips the Viper as he tries to head in. He thinks about saving the Viper, and it's just too, just too late. Someone's Flying dragon like creatures are not sticking together. They're even just letting the, the creep wave push it out. You know, Invoker's like, hey, bottom, I'm pushing everything. Okay, Yasha picked up by this heavy right click damage is actually a very interesting build for Invoker. He's getting all, all these uh, very high damage items, and look at his right click, it's insane. That combined with the Forge Spirits to, well, they decrease your armor, and then a Cold Snap, he's making it the classic right click Radiant's Invoker, -towers but getting banged up. with the evasion and everything that he has now, he's just, he's going for straight for the throat, it's kind of crazy. Explosions mid as, well, just getting the curses out and all that. Does some serious damage though to... Oh, here comes the hook. Uh, nope, no hook. There it is. Blind hook doesn't get anything. Mimic walks up, drops a mine, bottom towers the tower. Better days. Look at this tower, though. It's losing. It's just getting destroyed by this right-click invoker. He's the only one really hitting it. Look at that. It's crazy pants. Nuts. He's even back up to a grand. They have to come down, and he, he was right-clicking down faster. Look at him. They've been hanging out here forever. As... Yeah, look at this. He just stands here, he leaks the wave, then they have to go deal with the team, and he's just going to take the tower, or they're going to have to not deal with the team, and they take that tower. There's nothing that poor Radiant can do. They're like, it's such an unconventional build. Ah, uh, there's the invisibility coming out from the mine, that permanent invisibility. And you can't pierce it with two sides. 
the answer. bottom racks, the invisible invoker coming out. They only get him because of that radiance giving away, burning everybody. He's gonna turn around, try to get the kill on him. Oh, he's very low. He throws the tornado, goes for the silence. He's invisible. He gets hooked back by the punch, but okay, not enough to uh, actually kill him off as he. He'll just walk away from this. He got very close there. As the Huskar is also going to get... Yep. There he goes. Dead. Dead Invoker. And they just leave these tanky-ass spirit, Ford Spirits to right-click the armor down. He's about to six armor. That's insane for a, a Bristleback who else has usually has so much. The dire might want to mine that top Explosions tower. going off the this mid tower here. I mean, they have the remote mines. It might even be in range. So Dyer's top we'll see tower. if they uh, you know the drill. Got that sign for the the perma invis, so they can't even get close to it. All right, the dire Manta might style. Want Why not? The top tower. This is awesome. Okay, so he picks up the 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 Manta style to give himself even more right click. He's playing. This is a glorious invoker because down. it's built exactly like a Naga Siren. Or no, this is an, this, this is an anti mage build. <laughs> anti mage invoker. How Radiant's ironic is that? Mid tower, one mind enough to Dyer's finish top it off. Towers. You know the drill. Four staff and all the mines in the world, as soon as anybody looks at him wrong, they're gonna get four staffed into the explosion of their lifetime. Well, Invoker, he's picked up his Rod of Atos, stopping people from running away, and he's just gonna click it down. The push top has started with Rune as he just right clicks everything to death. <laughs> Seems to be the, the theme of this is hook, right click, and explosions. Simple yet effective. Aximnis decides he doesn't want to dive in on this because he knows that there's just explosions coming. He's got his Assault Curious recipe. He needs to get about 300 more gold before he gets the uh, Hyper Stone. There's the Force Staff. Uh oh, no explosions. Not quick enough on the, the clicky fingers. Sane comes in and look at this damage. That's a Huskar, everybody. A Huskar. He pops his armlet to try to go away. There's the Tornado. That's going to purge him of his, his amazingly needed buffs and then he falls. Down for 35 seconds, has buyback. Mew Ink taking oh, he's four giving himself damage. Sane Two down. getting another kill. Must have stepped on something. <laughs> Kills the Winter Wyvern with no problem. Picked up a Mask of Madness just Radiant's to increase this insanity. Hits. Goes in Viz. They can see him, of course, because of the towers, but he's just going to go straight into the fountain. Pops in. He doesn't slide. There's nobody there, and he's going to actually be fed away. No, the hook with the last save. Throws the tornado, but the ult's on him. This is going to be a dead invoker. He dies. The dominating oh streak. And he... 2,000 gold! 2,000! Holy shit snacks! That there is an insane Radiant's amount of gold. Going the way of the, uh, the Viper. Look at that. Didn't make it. Look at that! Oh, and actually have a game on our hands. 4,800 gold. He doubled his net worth with one kill. Lincoln from Stormy, but this also might be a mistake as Rude comes in to try to help deal with Matlock. Matchlock, sorry. He's not a... Uh, <laughs> A detective oh, getting the kill on the Viper, but the Viper didn't lose nearly as much gold as he didn't have the crazy storm. But Stormy's gonna pay his axe and his right clicks him down. The Don't, there's the techie suicide, but the Don't gonna be going down as well. That's 57 kills for the suicide as Rude needs to get out of here. It's a three for one trade. He goes for the port and, ooh, barely makes it out in time as the Invoker's back with a vengeance. He's like, nobody come and kill me. There's the freeze as Matchlock just gets right click to doom. <laughs> the die He's got four spirits. He's got everything. Bottom he's tower. just gonna walk away. Radiant's mid tower could use a hand. <laughs> Sane with an insane amount of damage. Tower. He's completely farmed, completely leveled. Uh, what do you do here? Oh, you know what? Look at, there's that little bump from his death. <laughs> the die oh. best do something about that bottom tower. Yes, the uh. It's just crazily insane build, which I, I love it. I I'm a, I would love to try this because it seems it's simple, it's effective. You don't have to have quick hands. You can just be, <laughs> you just pop your forge spirits, pop your Manta style, have your invis ready, acro, your, your acrylic, wow, alacrity, holy crap. Just three shot, three shot with no illusions, no nothing. He's alacrity up, throws the right clicks. Decides it's gonna back off. And when he has the Forge Spirits, they take down the armor as well, so he, he has like a free Desolator just hanging out with him. Two of them, right clicking stuff to death. These barracks have healed themselves back Get up, but now they're gonna start taking some damage racks. from you, Ink, and his veins. Look, disgusting. They do damage to both of them. Oh. 
This might be GG. I gotta say, you know, they didn't have to play the game. They could have forfeited, but they decided to go in with four. You gotta respect that from Land 9. Land 9 1 1, apparently. Never. F oh, come on. Radiance Too soon. Alright, New Ink goes in. And just decides he's gonna give them one more suicide. And Fizzles doesn't get any kill. But here comes the Sunstrike. But the hook gonna be taking that kill. A little late on the ult coming out from the Winter Wyvern. They turn around and try to get get ruined but there'll be the silence and look at this right click it's gonna be the game the insanely good very interesting 40 a minute match coming out from uh let's see it was a solo queue fantastic i would commend the hell out of this game so as you guys know we're gonna be coming up at the second game here as well so uh let's see that should be any second game. so thank you guys for watching we'll be right back with game two in the game is hard uh, series <laughs> coming out so i'm hitchhiker and i'll catch you in like two seconds so awesome <laughs> be right back